transactions in microservices is another big problem and a complicated problem to solve. In today's video, we'll discuss the same and we'll also find out how it is solved in the context of microservices. When you have a monolith system, you just have one service, maybe your application code and your DB is deployed on the same instance, or you have one service and your DB is deployed on a separate instance. In any case, you have just one database, you have different tables. Whenever there is a case when you have to make updates to two tables for one business flow, you just use a simple transaction, put lock in both rows, update the rows and release the lock and you are done. You commit the transaction. It is very easy. Now, what happens in the case of microservices? In the case of microservices, you have two different databases. You have two different services. And now you want to make sure that for one particular business logic, when you change the state in one DB in one table, you also have to change the state in the second DB in the second table. If this state is updated and this is not, your transaction is not completed. Either you revert this one or you make sure that this one happens. Now, how do you achieve this in case of microservices? One popular approach that you might have heard about is two-phase commit or two-PC commit as they say. It might sound complicated, but it is actually not that complicated if you just understand the two different phases of this particular approach and how it is carried out. Let's try to see that. Let's take the same example of two different services with two different DBs and their tables, and you need to make an update to both the tables at the same time, right? How do you do that? You will have, apart from these two services, you might have another service or worker, or you might have a worker implemented in these services itself in order to carry this out. But for the sake of simplicity, let's say that you have another service, which is called coordinator. What does this service would do? This service will, in first phase, ask both the services if they are ready for a two-phase transaction. Okay. In the first step, it will ask, are you ready? Can you update the state? It will also ask the another service, are you ready? Can you update the state? In the second step, let's say both the services say, yes, I can update. Yes, I can update. So this was the voting phase. Both the services sa said that, yes, we can update the state. Now, in the third step, the commit, actual commit happens. So this coordinator will say, okay, change the order state to accepted and change the email state to sent. As the fourth step, this order state is accepted and the email state is sent. Now, how does this happen? After the yes phase, after this second phase, both these services will put a lock on this particular rows. And till this transaction completes on both the services and this final yes happens from both the services, those rows will stay locked. And once that commit happens, both your databases are updated and your whole transaction is complete. This is known as two phase commit transactions. Now, it looks simple. If you want to simplify it, you can say that step one and two here are the vote phases and three and four here are the commit phases. But the problem comes when you have a very big system. Let's say that these databases are huge. These rows that we are talking about sit into the tables which have millions of rows. Having lock on these rows for multiple transactions will increase the latency of the system. And also it is risky to hold locks on such huge tables for a longer period of time right? This is one of the huge downsides of this particular approach. How do we solve this? How do we solve this problem? By the way, this problem is also known as long living transactions problem, right? Now, how do we do that? Also, when this voting and commit phases are happening, let's say that the voting phase was over. And as soon as the commit phase is happening, one of the services goes down or one of the DB st stops responding or stop accepting connections. In that case as well, you have the whole failed approach. Then you will have to go and release log and you just try the whole thing all over again. What is the solution towards this problem? It's very simple. Just don't do it. You don't need to take this approach. It is risky. If you find yourself in a situation in your team, where implementing this approach. If you have less amount of data, it might still be fine for a few days for one feature. But if you see that your data is growing, or if you see that you want to do microservices in a right way, then you should not go with this approach at all. Now, what is the actual solution? The actual solution in case of microservices is the saga approach or you must have heard about this term microservices sagas saga is nothing it is a fancy name for an algorithm that solves the problem of updating distributed state in different systems so let's say that you have service a b c d there is a particular state that is maintained in all the services and it has to be updated at the same time or in the same business flow in the same business transaction so any algorithm that helps you achieve this 
using events is actually saga saga is much more detailed than this there are different papers written on it i'm not going into too much details i'm only trying to help you understand the practical aspect of it of how it is used in microservices so let's try to see how transactions take place in sagas okay let's say that we have a pseudo code academy and uh, we are trying to create an account for a user and trying to assign some courses to them so how do we do it we have different services users payments courses and notifications so what are the steps that we have to do when a new user account is created we check for a duplicate account then we ask for payment the payment is done once the payment is done we create the profile and assign different courses and once all of that is done we send the notification to the student or the customer that your account is created and here are the courses that you have been assigned okay this all sounds good now what happens if one of the step fails let's say that you don't have any duplicate account but at the step of the payment it failed what would you do or let's say that payment is completed and assignment of courses failed now what do you do do you go back and not create the account or do you go back or like refund the payment what do you do in this case because your payment completion has already been done and your assigning to the courses failed right and you cannot go to the next step you cannot send the notifications so they will not get notification that the payment has been made they will not get the notification that the account has been created right it is a stuck state one of the approach that you can take in order to solve this is you can have some kind of backward recovery for this so let's say that your payment failed right and you were able to assign courses but your payment failed right what you can do is you can do a backward recovery you remove the courses you refund the payment and you remove the profile and after that maybe you can send an email that sorry we couldn't create your account please try creating it again okay this mechanism is called backward recovery that you repeat the steps that you have already executed but you do like a compensating backward mechanism for it like you have created the account remove the account you have taken the payment refund the payment you have instead of sending a success email send a failure email that sorry we couldn't do it right that is one way of handling it another way of handling it, it is that you retry okay let's say that your payment was successful but this step failed what you can do you can try that step again and continue your transaction that is another step to make this whole thing successful this is called forward recovery that you try to still move forward in the in the direction by trying the retry of the steps maybe you can apply the same approach in retrying of payments as well this approach where, where you try to retry is called forward re recovery instead of going backward you still try to move forward in the direction of the whole transaction but you try to retry while moving forward it is completely normal to go with a mixture of both approaches that you do forward recovery for some steps and you do backward recovery for some steps now this was an idea of how saga algorithms are or how saga transactions are carried out in in microservices now when talking about actual implementation there are two different ways to do it those two approaches are called orchestration and choreography in terms of microservices as the name suggests orchestration is something where there which follows command and control approach you might might have seen in the in the music uh, shows that there is a one person who is orchestrating the whole show so they have a command and control over who plays what when certain groups stop playing when certain groups starts playing and so on right so command and control is the type of architecture or the type of uh, problem solving approach that's taken in orchestration whereas choreography is an approach of trust but verify so you there is a choreographer who tries to teach the dancers or or the or the performers like how the whole show is going to look like but it verifies by practice and rehearsals that okay you will do fine and at the time of the show itself there is no choreographer to handle anything the the dancers or the performers handle everything on their own right so these are the two fundamental differences between these two approaches you will see when how sagas are implemented the same approach is applied to those solutions as well now let's say what how does the orchestration uh, approach would look like so in this case your user service is going to act as an orchestrator the user service is going to ask courses service to pair the user with with the courses and also user service is going to create the user account it will take the payment from the payments and once that is successful it will send the email it will ask the notification services to send email so basically user service has all the command and control it is talking to different services and telling them what to do like you courses service please pair the courses please take the payment and please send the email right so this is how an orchestration approach looks like now how does choreography looks like choreography is just like event based architecture all over again in this case there is no controller there is no orchestrator all the services are independent and they only depend on the events so user service emits user created event course service reacts to that user created event it takes 
the that event and maybe pair some courses to that user so the courses service is going to emit the event that user is paired with the courses payment service might consume that event to take the payment for those courses once payment service has done that it emits the event payment done and then notification service consumes that event and then sends an event of send email or actually sends the email right so you see here none of these services are acting as a commander none of these services have control all these services are just emitting the events and all the different other services are reacting to those events to complete the whole business flow right now how does this get implemented in real world scenarios so all these services would be owned by different teams and when a certain business transaction or a business law has to be implemented these teams will come together to align on the contracts of these events and what would happen in the reaction to these events in order to implement the whole flow now both these approaches have their pros and cons one of the con of choreography approach is that whenever something goes wrong you need to find out where it it went wrong it might be course service or it might be notification service or it might be some glitches in the data that is sent in the events so you need to have very good observability and monitoring in your system to figure that problem out in case of orchestration or or orchestrated services you generally have one orchestrator so you might find the origin of the problems starting from that particular service but even in this case it might happen that the problem is in some downstream service and it might take you some time to figure that out one of the approaches that is used in order to debug issues in in both these approaches is correlation id whenever these services are producing some kind of logs they all might use one particular id or a request id to emit the logs that is known as correlation id it's again a deep concept but you can go and google it up so that correlation id will actually help you to see all the transaction across different services like when which event happened in which service how a particular service reacted to that particular correlation id and you can pinpoint the culprit service which failed to fulfill the event or fulfill the transaction now how do you choose when do you have to go with uh, distributed transactions like we discussed that you shouldn't do it or when should you go with sagas right in general it is not recommended to go with distributed transactions but again if you are just bootstrapping or you have small services small data sets you can actually try it out for some time but whenever you have scale and you have a lot of teams it is recommended to go with the sagas depending on your services and the architecture and the different needs of your business you can either go with the orchestration approach or the choreography approach the important thing to note in both these cases is that you have to have very good logging systems and monitoring systems so so that it becomes easier for you to debug problems in production when you have uh, a lot of scale and such issues are bound to occur in large scale systems so you should be ready to debug issues at such a scale and for that you should have proper monitoring systems in the place that is one of the things to be taken care of while implementing these approaches i have added some of the resources in the description if you have any doubt please feel free to leave it in the comments i will see you in the next video